All right, this is the 2010 AMC 10A Problem 23. It was also the 12A Problem 19. Each of 2010 boxes in a line contains a single red marble. And for K between one and 2010 inclusive, the box in the Kth position also contains K white marbles. Before we read on, let's make sense of that. So box one is going to have the one red marble that every box has. And since K is one, this is the first position, it's also going to have one white marble. What about box two? It will have the single red marble and two white. And box three will have the single wet red marble and three white. The number of white equals the box number. Okay, good so far. Isabella begins at the first box and successively draws a single marble at random from each box in order. She stops when she first draws a red marble. Let P of N be the probability that Isabella stops after drawing exactly N marbles. Let's make sense of that. Again, when you don't know what to do, the problems can be overwhelming, you're on 23, don't worry about a big overarching strategy or how you're going to get from beginning to end. Just start writing down pieces of information that you're able to determine and see what you can make of it later. Right? Build upon what your observations are. So let's do probability of one. Again, one being n, she would be stopping after the first box, which means she got a red marble on the first box. There's two marbles in the first box, one of which is red. So there's a one in two chance she draws red. How about if she stops after the second box? That means box one white, box two red. White has the same probability as red in box one, one in two. And since these are independent events, we multiply them. The chance of getting red on the second box is one out of the total marbles, which is three. Okay, let's look at the probability that she stops on the third box. That means she went white, white, red. Well, again, white is going to be one out of two, but white on the second box is not one out of three, it's two out of three. And on the third box, she gets a red marble, which is one out of the total, which is four. Okay, this is good enough. We kind of have a feel for what's happening. We'll try to capitalize on our observations in a minute. Let's finish reading the problem. What is the smallest value of n, again, that's the number in the parenthesis, for which p of n is less than 1 over 2010. Again, n is the box that she stops on, the box that she draws red. What can we make of this over here? Let's simplify some of it. I mean, you could write 1 sixth, but let's just leave it alone for there. What I want to observe is that this 2 cancels this 2, and I have a 3 and a 4. Wait a minute, there's a 2 times 3 here in the denominator and a 3 times 4 here. This 2 could be thought of as 1 times 2. If I thought of it that way, 1 over 1 times 2, 1 over 2 times 3, 1 over 3 times 4, then it looks like the n is the first number and the second number is 1 more than that. Meaning that it appears to be that p of n is 1 over n times n plus 1. We want to do one more case just to verify we're not making some mistake in reasoning. So if I do P of 4, she stops on the fourth box, she would get white, 1 out of 2, white again, 2 out of 3, white on the third box is now 3 out of the total 4, and box 4 is going to have 4 white marbles and 1 red, so it's going to be 1 out of that 4 plus 1, which is 5. Again, observe that the denominator here cancels the numerator here, and it's a chain reaction. But what you're left with is 1 in the numerator and 4 times 5 in the denominator, which indeed confirms this is what's happening. So now that we can see that's what's happening, we just need to apply it to this formula. 1 over n times n plus 1 is less than 1 over 2010. Um, now, you can just cross multiply if you want. There is an inequality, but we're not multiplying by a negative, so we don't really have to worry about um, that aspect of it. Um, I can multiply both sides by this and both sides by this, um, and you would get uh, 2010 is less than 
n times n plus 1. And you also might just say that these, you could reciprocal them, and when you take the reciprocal of two positive numbers, the inequality flips. If you're not sure of that, do some examples to convince yourself that it's true. Okay, so then, uh, notice that n times n plus 1 is going to be a little bit more than n squared, so we're kind of just looking for a perfect square that's larger than 2010 as a starting point. If we glance at the answers, we see the smallest possible value of n in the answers is 45, so let's just think about what 45 squared is. There is a trick for numbers that end in 5. You take the part left of the 5 and you add the number after it in the number line and you multiply, it's hard to explain. Again, let's just say 15 squared, okay? It's 225, but this two right here can be thought of as the product of the one right here and the number after it. And then it ends in 25 because of the five. Let's check 25 squared. Well, this two, again, what's the number after two in the number line? It's three, and two times three is six, so you get 625. For 35 squared, Again, all these numbers are going to end in 25. 3 times the number after it in the number line, 4. 3 times 4 is 1225. So if we apply that here, 4 times 5 is 20. Throw 25 on the end, and you can see that 45 squared equals 2025. Well, that's already bigger than 2010. So clearly, if I do 45 times 46, it'll be even bigger. What about 44 times 45? It's actually going to be smaller than 2010 and not work, but even if it was, this is the smallest possible answer, and since it already is bigger than 2010, it is the answer.